Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back. Glad to see you looking fresh. And tonight, I wanted to step into the world of the beginnings of horror, the beginnings of Halloween and our foray into the universal monsters. The feeling, the vibe, the experience of that old, tinny, black and white, scratched up, splotted monster creation. And I wanted to discuss this today because we are close to Halloween. And when it comes to it, no one speaks Halloween quite like these monsters do. Dracula, the start of it all. Of course, written onto the page by Bram Stoker himself, brilliantly played by Bela Lugosi. When you think of Dracula, he is the one you think of. No one else quite exemplifies what Dracula is, who he is, quite like Bela Lugosi does in this film that kicked off the Universal Monster craze. And Dracula, watching it, feels so ahead of its time. You wouldn't be able to guess that this is a 30s film. Quite easily, you could slide right alongside 1950s cinema and happily sit on the shelf amongst its peers. It feels so, so, so ahead of what any other horror thing was doing at the time. Being able to create such great tension, great atmosphere, and such an iconic character to boot. Dracula is and always will be the face of the monsters of Universal. Following shortly behind it, Frankenstein. The second, maybe some people's favorite, but arguably second in command to Dracula's face, Frankenstein happily sits right beside as one of, if not the most iconic creations. Mary Shelley created this on the page, beautifully displayed by Boris Karloff on the screen. Frankenstein showcases horror in a way, again, much different than what Dracula was able to accomplish in a way that we have not seen before. Gothic imagery, mad scientists creating life out of discarded parts. Frankenstein is of course an icon amongst icons. And between the two, we're able to create an entire genre on their shoulders. Sure, there was spooky, scary films before it, but none other than Dracula and Frankenstein were able to give birth to what is seen today as the monster movie. Horror incarnate, if you will. The birthplace of modern Halloween, some might say. When you think of Halloween, think of the most iconic costumes. Trick-or-treating, what do you see the most? Besides your Star Wars and superheroes, the icons stand true. Your Draculas, your Frankensteins, and of course, the rest of them. Six others stand alongside these titans as not quite up to their par, but still able to stand alongside them. The way I classify these are the way that Universal classified these. The eight, the big eight, if you will. Universal has plenty more monsters if you want to dive deeper into spin-offs, sequels to some of these that I will not be covering here today. But I implore you to look further than these eight. Dig deeper into what Universal catalogs there are to see. And maybe, just maybe, you'll find something new to love that I don't even talk about here. So let's jump to another iconic face. One without a face, maybe. Let's talk about the Invisible Man. One of... Again, the most iconic creations to grace our screen. A, a concept that is so easily understood, but so genius in its execution. What if we can create a monster where we don't have to create a monster? You take a person, you wrap him in bandages, says he's invisible, and then when he's not wrapped in bandages, you can shoot a blank wall. Easy on paper, very difficult in execution, and way back when they were able to showcase just how effective an empty room can truly be. The Invisible Man easily stands amongst the most iconic and honestly easiest to dress up for as Halloween. Wrap yourself up in bandages and say you're invisible. Or wrap yourself up in bandages, say you're an embalmed corpse of an ancient era. An Egyptian tomb, the mummy, another one, Ben retold many times, changed amongst the years, but started here in cinema amongst these horror icons and stands still amongst them anytime someone is doing a parody. 
Doing an homage. You're easy to find a bandage cladded monster amongst the group. Easily understood. You dig somebody up. He's very upset about it. He wants his revenge. It's easy to understand why this is one of the most retold of the classic universal monsters. But what about one that spawned a genre in and of themselves? The Wolfman. Arguably the very first werewolf to ever grace cinema. And easy enough to understand why he created an entire subgenre in the genre in which he resides in. The monster movie as a whole happily includes vampire films and werewolf films. The two big ones. Obviously it's understandable why Dracula would create one. But the Wolfman is easily the grandfather of an entire genre. One that has been retold, told again. Funny werewolf movies, sad werewolf movies. Werewolf movies where you want to fall in love. Now that can be said about vampire films as well, which is why they've crossed over a time or two. But The Wolfman, easily, one of the last big ones to come out, still an easy icon. A monster that I may not include and may forget sometimes is included. But since Universal includes them, I'll say their piece now. The Phantom of the Opera. A tale as old as the opera itself. A man is working behind the scenes, disfigured, seeks his revenge on said opera. It's romantic. It's big. It's grandiose. It's told here. The iconic white mask showcased amongst side fangs and fur as a classic monster, perhaps. Like I said, I may not include it amongst the group a lot of the time, but it's a tale that's easy to tell, and I will include it now. Now, perhaps my two favorites I've left for last. A sequel to one of our favorite monsters, Frankenstein, comes Bride of Frankenstein. This film works easier as more of a Frankenstein movie than even the first. Frankenstein's monster, if you will. So Frankenstein's monster requires a bride. Sure. Create another monster to help calm the monster that's rampaging through. And this film, we get to experience Frankenstein throughout the entire film, rather than just the last little bit of it. We get to see him fall in love. Bride of Frankenstein. Incredibly iconic creation and design. The only woman of the group. A forerunner of female characters. A forerunner of female horror icons. The Bride of Frankenstein easily stings among the best films of the bunch here. And last, and absolutely not least, my favorite Universal Monster and Universal Monster film, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Almost feels like cheating to include this film way back here in the pack. This film came out in the 50s, 20 years after the birth of the Universal Monsters comes their final massive icon, and 20 years of film development was not lost amongst this film, where Dracula easily could have been a 50s film. The actual 50s film, known as Creature from the Black Lagoon, also feels decades ahead of its time. Bigger sets more grandiose design. A creature that feels alive, feels iconic in its own way, and one that's very hard to replicate exactly. The Creature from the Black Lagoon, easily my favorites. While, of course, not feeling exactly like Halloween. So, do with that information what you will. These eight characters and eight films are what Halloween means to me. Candy, trick-or-treating, different costumes of many iconic characters have graced the streets for decades. But these eight, they'll always be around. They'll always be somebody's favorites. And each Halloween, someone will dive into them for the very first time. And I hope that you, dear viewer, can be one of those ones that takes a step into viewing the classic Universal Monster films and understanding why they are so iconic and why we still hold on to them so dearly to this day. And, as an added bonus, I will be saying other films that maybe you just don't want to dig into 1930s film. Fine. Here are some other examples that you can dig into. 
Now, I will say, Bride of Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, those ones are as they are. They will not be getting replacements here. The other six, however, I do have some ideas where you can jump in. Dracula. Very easy. There have been so many Dracula films later on in life. The Hammer films, which star very famous and very young Christopher Lee. But I would pick none other than the 1990s Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, of, of course, Godfather fame, created one of the most beautifully gothic creations film has ever seen. It's lavish, it's lush, it's incredibly bold, and it should not have worked, but it absolutely does. For Frankenstein, we're going to jump to 1970s young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks comedy, which honestly tells the story of Frankenstein quite well, with a classic spoof twist to it, honestly quite fun to enjoy. For The Invisible Man, I'm going all the way to 2020, a film that is one of the best of the year, while of course, as we all know, we did not have much competition that year, is easily able to retell the story of The Invisible Man in a modern age, a new twist on a classic monster, and one that breathes new life into the character. The Wolfman. Honestly, you can pick any werewolf film. American Werewolf in London might be my favorite, so I might recommend going there. But there is a new Wolfman movie coming out. Like I said, since the film did spawn an entire genre, I honestly believe you can go any which way with this one. The Phantom of the Opera has been retold and retold and retold, and you can go see this one on Broadway if you wanted to. For film, I would pick one of two. One, if you want more of a classic take, starring the face of Freddy Krueger himself as the Phantom, simply Phantom of the Opera from the 80s is a great choice. If you wanted a bit more 80s, for lack of a better word, Phantom of the Paradise also came out that decade. A much crazier out there take on the tale, you'll still understand the tale quite well, and it's more expressive, more exciting. The Mummy, interesting one. I say if you don't want the horror elements of it, Easy to go with the 90s adventure film of the same name. I do think it understands The Mummy better than the 30s film does. It respects the culture just that much more. And it's an adventure film over a horror film. So if you're a little bit scared and you still want to experience the monster, by all means. So with those films down, I hope you've added some new films to your watch list. Or maybe you feel like going all the way back and watching the classics. And with that, I hope you all have a very happy Halloween. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like this if you like this. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you at some point.